Okay, so today we're going to be going over the actual construction of my kaleidoscopes from my kaleidoscope file. So let me start by showing you the different styles of kaleidoscope that are included in the file, and then we'll talk a little bit about construction, how to set up your, mater your materials, and then um, what items you need to buy in addition to the file. So we can see that this is the wheel style kaleidoscope. It's very simple. It basically has a much larger image disc that rotates in and out of view, allowing you to really transform that image. And this one can be changed out by simply unscrewing this little piece here, which is a Chicago binding screw. And then by taking that off, you can slide this right off and then you can see the basic interior construction. We have in this one a three mirror system. There's a little acrylic spacer just in case, you can always take that off. And then the wheel slides right back on. This screws into place and that's all you need to do for this one. So this one's really simple to change out but it's got a nice finished look to it. I think this one's slightly easier to construct as well. So that's option one. We also have this style here, and this is a little more compact. It's also free rotating. So this item, although it's not gonna pop off, will rotate around, allowing you to change your image. These end pieces, I have made these magnetic. So there's a series of magnets in here that are right behind the veneer glued ring. And then there's a series of matching magnets here, and that's how it connects. So what's nice about this is I made sure that all of my north and or south are facing the same way. So no matter how I place it on there, it's gonna magnetize on. And now this one's a little bit, a little bit more complicated because we have some layers here, but it's really not that difficult to make. So we can see those are two of the main styles. It also includes a stand, and this is very simple. You can make this out of quarter inch. So you can see this piece is actually a quarter inch of Baltic birch, or you can layer eighth of an inch. And that's what I've done for these two pieces here. So you could cut it either out of a quarter or layer your pieces here. And that's what I've done. So I have a solid piece on the bottom, quarter inch, a veneer layer, and then just two layers of acrylic there for a nice contrasting look. Now finally, I've actually added a bonus item to the file, and that is this piece. This allows you to make the same basic tube construction as the other kaleidoscopes, but instead you fit on this end piece. And this allows you to use a glitter wand as your, um, your image disc. So instead of having to make your image discs, which we will look at, this allows you to just buy a glitter wand or use one you already have and then fit it into the fitting. So it's just another kind of interesting and kind of fun style there. Okay, so let's begin going over the construction. So let's start with the wheel style since that's a little bit simpler. So you can see for this one, all you really have here, and I just added glue to this, but then the camera died, so it's already sealed on. But essentially you have two discs with little holes in them or tab slots. And then all you have here is you actually have little tabbed slats. And you fit those into this side here, the image, I call this like the, uh, well, the IP side is probably the right way to say it. Fit those all in. And then when you're ready, you would put your mirror system inside and then finish it up by snapping this piece on. So the trick to snapping this on is just to start from one side and work your way around. So I find the easiest way is to kind of get one of them in and then work your way around. I think this is probably the hardest part of construction and it's really not that difficult. It just takes a couple seconds to kind of work your way one by one around the ring. And then once you get them all aligned properly, it'll just pop right on. Getting those last two. Done, so that's the essential construction of the tube. For the eyepiece, you just glue that on. And my favorite glue for this is Weld Bond. It dries really fast. Um, it's a little bit thicker, so it's not gonna like go everywhere and just get liquidy all over your workspace. And then it bonds super quick. So basically once you stuck that, it has enough like friction or adhesion that you can almost continue working with the piece. So that's our basic tube. Now for the actual image disc, as we saw, we need to add a Chicago binding screw. And that's what these are here. 
So they come at a lot of different lengths. They also come in different finishes. So if you wanted like a brass one or a black one, they are also available there. I think for these, I used these 20 millimeter size. And then all I'm gonna need to do is, I actually probably would do this before snapping this on, is I'm gonna thread this through. It's gonna be a little challenge with it on, but essentially, Thread that through like that. And I would glue this in place with a strong glue, like a two-part epoxy. And then that way, when you take your image disc off, it's not gonna fall into the actual tube. So you wanna glue that in place. And then you'll be able to sort of just add this on and slide on and off spacers as needed. Um, and your, change your image discs out as you choose. So that's basically the simple construction of number one. If you're wondering about the colors, this is actually painted with folk art ultra dye. So it works a little bit like watercolor. It's very, very vibrant. And then I just sealed it by rubbing it with Danish oil and it actually works really well. So between this and Unicorn Spit, I really like them both. I think this one is maybe a little bit faster to work with because it dries so quick and um, it stays vibrant even before you seal it. So you don't have to like perfectly, perfectly seal it to get it to look really nice. So that's our start of number one. I'm gonna set that aside and let's look at the second option. So this one with the magnetic image disc is a little bit different. It's very slightly more complicated, but not by much. Um, and essentially what's happening is before you put on your end piece, and you can see I don't have my mirror system in here yet because we're gonna look at those. You're gonna slide on this decorative and optional hexagonal ring. And I like that just because it's nice and tight and it sort of holds everything in place. And then you're gonna slide on one of your larger discs. So you can see it's a little bit bigger than this one. I'm gonna slide that up. And then with the remaining discs, you're gonna construct this piece here. So this one has two of these circles. You can see they're a little bit thinner. And then one slightly thicker one on the end that has holes in it where you would put um, your magnets. So just to kind of show you what that looks like on the opposite side, this is what the actual image disc has hidden behind the veneer ring. So you basically have a ring with matching little holes and you would put your magnets all in there, stick the veneer on and that holds them in place. You don't even have to glue the magnets in and then glue this piece together. After we've added our mirror system and it's all ready to go, all we have to do is glue along this edge here and I'm actually gonna probably use weld bond to do that, which is an acrylic adhesive because I have acrylic pieces here. And I would glue that piece just to this ring. And once that's done, this will freely rotate. So there's nothing like special you really have to do. If you use all wood, I suggest adding a little bit of candle wax or a little bit of oil onto this just to help the rotation. But otherwise, once that's glued on there, you now have a really simple method for rotating your image. Now you'll see in this one, I have a little triangle here and this is just a decorative piece of wood. That's optional. I do believe I have that here as well. If you would like to use the optional sort of decorative piece to kind of cover up everything, then all you would do is need to glue that onto the end before you glue this piece in place. And then you'll have the same look. Now, the one thing you wanna be careful about is make sure before you glue this in that you check it doesn't block any of your mirror system. So you can kind of see my mirror system in this one. And this is not a good mirror to use, it's too thick. But um, you don't want any of the acrylic to be blocking the view or you're gonna see that from the other side and it's not gonna look good. So if this is blocking your view, you don't need that piece, I would leave it out. Or, of course, you can go into the file and change the shape and adjust it as needed. So that's the basic construction of this one. Very, very simple. For the stand, I barely need to tell you anything about that. It's really very basic. This one I've actually made out of quarter inch. You basically have tabbed pieces. You have a receiving base piece with a tab. I like to add some glue so that they really stick in there. This piece obviously needs to be painted or stained. And then I like to cut one solid shape on the bottom to hide the tabs and to just give it a little more thickness or weight. So this one's made out of quarter inch. This one is just doubled up, eighth inch. So that's really, really simple. Now for this one, so before we get into the actual image discs for the other construction kaleidoscopes and the mirror system, let's look at this little bonus piece here. So
So it's very, very simple. I'm going to slide this out. You have two layered pieces here. And there's an option in the file. There's one that's like solid with no hole in the middle. You could cut that out of clear acrylic if you didn't want to have like the ring. You're going to layer those up. Add your little tab circle pieces. And this will work for about a half inch um, diameter uh, glitter wand. <clears throat> and I would definitely glue this because the weight of this is not heavy, but you don't want this like popping out. So I would absolutely glue these pieces into place once you're ready. This would of course snap onto the end of your image tube in place of whatever style you want. So this would work on easily on either design. And then for your glitter wand, you need to add rubber O-rings. And that's what these are here. So I got these for about $2, $3 at Home Depot. You can order them from a lot of places online, but they're cheapest if you just go to a local hardware store. You can get a number nine or a number 10. I think even a number 11 would fit, but I know number 10 is pretty common. So let's grab an extra one of those. And then you would add one of your O-rings slide this through and then just roll your other one on get that centered or if you don't want it centered it's kind of up to you how you want to do it just rotate those forward until you have a nice tight fit and you might need to kind of like scoot them down there we go and now you can see that's a nice tight fit and you'll be able to rotate your wand to allow the glitter to fall in different directions and it's going to kind of just move on its own and transform that image so that's a nice little simple bonus piece. I do suggest using glue with this one. So, okay, let's actually look at the next stage in these kaleidoscopes, and that's the mirror system. So I'm gonna open this back up, just get, because I'm gonna need this open in order for me to put the mirrors inside. And let's take this option as well, and I'm gonna show you what I already have in this one. So this was a prototype of the design as I was working on it. It's not glued in yet but we have our mirror system in here. And this also includes sort of a little trick that I'm gonna show you. And this is um, EVA foam. If you ever like made costumes, it's a pretty common item. I really love this because it can be cut on the laser, but you can see I just hand cut it because it only took about 30 seconds. And it holds it in place so that your mirror doesn't rattle around. You can also glue your mirror in place, but I think that this is a really great option. So the basic construction of one of the most common mirror types is this three mirror equilateral triangle. Now, when you're doing your mirrors, you wanna make sure that you choose the thinnest mirror you can find. The thicker your mirror, the more you're gonna have distortion and blurriness in your image. And with this one, you can actually see it's really hard to get even those corners to meet up because of how thick this mirrored acrylic is. So I have some other options here, which I'm gonna show you. I have some actual kaleidoscope mirrors and I ordered these from Kaleidoscopes for You, I believe, or Kaleidoscopes to You. And what's unique about these is the coating for the mirror is actually on the front side. That's going to result in the absolute clearest image you can get because when the mirrored coating is on the back side, shining through the clear item, it creates distortion. So if you can, I do recommend actually ordering proper, um, it's kind of like front finished acrylic mirrors, there's another name for it. You can see these actually still have their coating on. It looks like that's the mirror side, but it's not. Um, this is actually the side you wanna use. So we have those. They also come in an acrylic form. With the acrylic form, you wanna be a little bit careful with it because once you peel that off, if you scratch it or smudge it, it is almost impossible to clean these. So you have to treat them like it's a surgical tool or something and just take really, really good care of the acrylic front-faced mirrors because they will scratch so fast and then they can never basically be cleaned. So when you're constructing your simple three-sided mirror, you can see this is essentially what you want to do. So this one says this is the front surface, peel the protective blue coating. All I've done was I have taped them together and then the gap in between is about the thickness of whatever the mirror is because that will give it the room it needs to rotate up and then close into a triangle. Then you would just add some tape along here and then wrap another layer or two of tape like this. So I've just used um, painter's tape, but you can use anything you want. Now the acrylic mirror, including this front facing acrylic mirror can be cut on the Glowforge. Otherwise you can order pre-cut mirrors 
or you can just score and snap those using a glass cutting tool. It's really up to you. So something else to be noted about the mirrors is there's a lot of different configurations. And if you go to the blog post, there's some links that talk about that. But depending on the angle and the number of mirrors you choose to use, you can get a completely different image. So for example, this one, for this one, we only have a very narrow area we need to be looking at. And for this type of kaleidoscope, I would probably choose to do a two mirror system with a very narrow triangle like this. And that means that I would probably want to change the shape of this sort of like viewing area. I don't want a giant circle if I'm only looking through to a small area. And then I would do a two mirror system like this and then cut like a piece of black mat board and just add that as the third side. So you actually use a black side and then two mirrors and it creates a mandala like image, which is really beautiful. But there's a lot of other better resources on how to do that. So I'll let you continue with the research there. Just know that you have a ton of different mirror options and the configuration is really up to you. So long as you can fit it in this tube, you are good to go. So now if you are going to cut this EVA, and you can see I ripped it because I didn't do a very good job there, to hold this in place, you can easily just take it right here. And one of my tricks is to kind of find like a ring or something that's like around the size of whatever I'm doing here, and then just press it into the foam. And it's gonna make a mark that you can see. So let me see if I can grab a blade here. I believe I have some extra pieces around here. Essentially, I could use this to get an idea. And if I just press it into that foam, you probably won't be able to see this on camera, but I can see the marks of where I'm trying to cut. And then I would just really quickly, doesn't have to be perfect because it's going to be hidden, cut my circle out or whatever shape. And you can cut this on the Glowforge as well. So if you want to go into the file and add that, you can. I didn't include it in the file because I figured everybody's mirror system is going to be slightly different. Maybe your triangle is not perfect and I didn't want to give you a perfect triangle in this and then it not match up with your mirrors. Once you've actually constructed your mirrors, center it as best you can, press it into the foam, and you're going to see a triangle of where you need to cut those mirrors out. And once again, because this is sort of like I'm cutting it just a little bit thicker, doesn't really have to be perfect. It will work to kind of hold the mirrors in place. So I would cut two of these. And then once you get that out, you would just slide that onto your mirror system. One in the front and one in the back. This will also kind of protect a lot of like dust and debris from getting in there. Slide that into your kaleidoscope. I'm going to have a little slot pop out here. And then pop on your end piece. And you can see that like that's really going to hold in place. It's going to stop any rattling or shaking. I think that's a really good tip. You can get this foam just about anywhere. I ordered mine from Amazon because that's my favorite thing to do. And then if we pull up my calipers here, I'll show you about how thick it is. It is 0.2, I think I, this, I ordered this as quarter inch foam, but it's about 0.2 inches and that's perfect. So I would try and get something as thick as you can just so it really holds in place. If you don't have the foam, you can actually stuff this with just about anything. Batting, a little bit of tissue paper, whatever you want. I just really like this and I had some on hand, so that's perfect. So that's the essential sort of parts of the mirror system taping into a triangle or any shape. You can actually do squares as well. Adding your little foam sort of, not really spacers, but supports, sliding it in, closing up your kaleidoscope, gluing anything that you need to glue. So like sealing this on, doing whatever, and then you move on to your image disks. So let's talk about the image disks really quickly. All right, so I'm gonna clear some of this stuff out of the way just to show you the construction of the two different styles of image disks. So I'm gonna unscrew this one. Very easy, just slide that off. You can see it has a little spacer. Move that out of the way. And now we have two different styles of image disks. 
not counting our glitter tube, but you're not going to be making this. You can just purchase those um, at a variety of different places, including Amazon. So we have the wheel style, which has a hole in the center. And then we have this magnet style. So let's look at the actual pieces that go into the construction of these two different image discs. So for this one, these are just some little spacers that I have set aside. You're going to have one face, a center ring, and you can see it's pretty thin. A little ring for the center piece here, a little hole. And then another round here. So that's the basic construction. Now the veneer is just decorative. You don't need this. I just don't like the way the glue looks, so I like to cover it up. I think it looks a little more polished and finished that way. Um, the reason all of these little pieces are here and that I did this all out of acrylic, you see this is a quarter, this is a little bit thinner because I happen to have some, you could easily use an eighth, is I actually planned on the next set of these to make it a liquid filled kaleidoscope design. So here's an ornament I've done to kind of show you the basic concept. And you can see that it just moves really slowly. It doesn't have the clattering sound. It looks really, really nice through the kaleidoscope. So this is essentially this item here. The most important thing if you're going to do an oil-filled kaleidoscope is that you seal those edges perfectly. And for that, we're going to use an acrylic weld. So we'll show that in a moment. Okay, so sorry for the little jump cut. Uh, the camera died about midway through, but we'll continue. So we looked a little bit at this image disc style and we've kind of talked about the materials for that. Now let's take a look at this one here. So this one is a little bit more complicated in that it has magnets in it that hold it on, but it's basically the same concept. You're gonna essentially have a few layers of acrylic and let's look at those. So I'd already glued this in the previous cut, but I will show you how to do that again. So what I have here is the base plate. I then have two rings of acrylic because you can layer them up to make a thicker image disc. And then I have the final plate here, which has a variety of little holes in it that correspond with the magnets. And then at least the single veneer ring. So you might be able to sort of see here, let me actually gently pull this masking off. You might be able to kind of see how the glue sort of creates kind of like a filmy, bubbly appearance. And this is the main reason that I have the veneer rings. They just kind of cover that up and they make it look really nice. But here is our first image disc. And then once we've filled the item, we would glue this one on here. And then we would apply our magnets. So let's take a look at these magnets. These are rare earth magnets and these are three millimeters by three millimeters. And I have a little trick here for making sure that they line up correctly. And that's have them together in this nice little row. And then all you have to do is start placing them in the slots and then sliding them off. So like breaking them off. And the reason to do that is it ensures that the north and the south face of the magnet are all going the same way. And that helps because that means that once all the magnets are in there, so it's not wanting to let go, um, that you'll be able to attach your image disc in any orientation. If you just kind of like have them in a pile and you stick them in willy nilly, you're gonna have the problem of the image disc having to be rotated an exact way in order to attach on. So let's take a look at what that means. So if we look, at our image disc here. You can see I actually already have magnets on this one. So let me sweep these off just for a moment. If you stick this on, let's find our magnet side. I can rotate it any way and it's still going to stick on there because they're all facing the same way. So that's really important and helpful. So one way to do that is to do what I actually just showed and instead apply all of your magnets to one side first. You can see I've already sealed them in there behind the ring. Stick them on like that. And then when your image disc is finished and sealed and ready for its magnets, line those up. And then very gently, it's a little hard because it's not actually glued in place, slide that off. And you can see I missed one, but generally I'll be able to get them all exactly in their slots. 
and they'll be nicely lined up. I can then just add my veneer ring over top, no need to glue, and then they will all be nicely in place. So that's kind of my little magnet trick for making sure that they're all facing the same way, is to keep them in a row as you apply them, and then to either apply them all to one um, side first and then stick them all on and slide them off, or just make sure that you pay attention and you double check. So that's really important. So now let's go back to our image discs here and let's talk about gluing them. So unfortunately the camera died and I wasn't able to show you exactly how I did this, but it's pretty quick. So the glue that I use, it's not really a glue. It's a solvent adhesive and this is um, acrylic weld number four. The, ref the four refers to the fact that it's water thin, which is actually best. So what I'll do is I'll take a non-medical syringe, so it's not super sharp, and I will just draw up some of that liquid. And then I will sit my rings how I want them to look. And I will use either binding clips, or there's a variety of other like small clamps, like I have a chip clip here, or these are like actual clamps. I got these in a variety pack from Home Depot. And I will just clip those on. You want it to be held pretty tight because that allows capillary action to draw this very watery adhesive into the seam. So once you have them like that, you would then take your syringe and you're gonna run it along every seam, very gently, just barely any pressure to just let a little stream of this stuff out as you go along the seam. And you're gonna do that along this inner edge as well. Now I try to, normally when I'm gluing these, I leave at least as much masking on as I can because if you get this on the surface, do not rub it off. Let it evaporate from the surface. If you rub this stuff into the surface, it's going to melt the surface and it's gonna mess up the look of the acrylic. So just make sure you take your time with that. And this stuff glues so fast that you can basically take your clamps off after maybe like 30 to 40 seconds. The bond will get stronger over 24 to 48 hours though. So if you're gonna do an oil-filled acrylic as I was showing before, you should definitely wait until this is fully cured before you do that. Now, in order to do an oil-filled acrylic, I have a blog post on that, but you would then fill your image disc, seal it up nice and tight, and with this, I would make sure to add acrylic weld in all of these holes just in case. And then finally, you would probably want to add your um, oil afterwards. So before I actually seal it, right at this stage, I would actually take my Dremel and drill a hole in here that's big enough for me to take a larger syringe to pump in the oil. Now I use baby oil, but you could also use a mixture of water and glycerin. I think it's like one to four parts, but I would look that up online because there's plenty of great recipes for that. So um, I would make sure to clean this out really well, drill my hole, make sure there's no dust in it, seal it up, pump it full of the oil, and then seal that hole using either um, UV uh, epoxy or UV resin, two-part epoxy, or even if your hole is quite the right size, you could actually cut a little acrylic plug on your Glowforge to fit. Now in this one, you can see, um, because this is meant to be an ornament, I took that hole, I added an actual um, eye screw and I glued that in with UV acrylic, or not UV acrylic, UV uh, resin, and that worked really well. It's definitely watertight. I have, I've dropped this before and it's held pretty well. So that is how you would construct this one. Now same thing for this one, very simple. The trick to getting this aligned is to actually take one of your binding posts, run it up in there, and then just pinch it really hard not so you're going to slip, but just hold it in place and then run your acrylic weld all around it. After you've done that and it's cured long enough, I suggest going back into it and doing it along the outer seam as well, which is a little hard to see on camera, but I'm definitely going to do that. I want to make sure that I don't have any liquid leaks. If you do, you can use UV um, resin to kind of usually patch those. So I wouldn't panic, but it really helps if you make sure that you seal this really, really, really well. So that being said, now that we actually have our wells almost done, 
let's take a look about what we can use or like what materials we have to actually fill them. So personally, I'm a really big fan of using anything that's very transparent. I learned with these first two designs that you really want to avoid sequins. And the reason for that is not a lot of light passes through this. I don't have a map gas torch, so I can't flame polish these, but glass has a lot more clarity than these edges after they've been laser cut. So you want to make sure you're getting as much light as possible, and the sequins tend to block the light. I actually really prefer to use glass beads or pieces of lampwork glass. So these here are actually from Kaleidoscopes to you. You get a little packet of those. More iridescent beads. Anything that's going to let light pass through it is going to look really, really, really beautiful in the kaleidoscope. And then one other thing I really like is because I hate wasting, I love to take my little scraps of acrylic and hold on to those for use in kaleidoscope. So these are just like tiny little squares that were cut out of a completely different acrylic project. I guarantee these are gonna look awesome inside the kaleidoscope. So I actually have a little container where if I have a really kind of interesting looking shape, such as maybe these diamonds or like ovals, I just kind of keep track of any of my clear or translucent acrylics. And I save those for filling my kaleidoscopes. So it's a great way to not waste any material. And you can see that here with the hearts. So the hearts are actually little acrylic scraps from a different design. So hopefully that kind of gives you a sense of how to put these together. But that's the essential elements of creating the image discs. Now, as a final note for this one, there's not really any special secret. You just gotta buy one of these. But you will notice that um, they do have sequins in this, and the reason is because there's so much more light that can pass into this, it still tends to work pretty well, even with the opaque sequins. So although you're seeing sequins here and you're seeing them here, I don't recommend using many, if any of them, inside the image discs unless they're translucent sequins, something like that. So here are some final thoughts about the different kaleidoscopes. I'm going to show you the finished products for all of the designs. We have both of the magnetic ring styles here. So you can see I have done like an oil filled design and then this is a dry design. In order to compensate for the fact that the oil makes this a little bit heavier, I've actually just added two additional rings and I have welded these on. And what that does is it just creates a little lip that prevents this from getting knocked off. So the magnets are still one of the main elements holding it in place, but this larger ring gives you somewhere to put your hands to turn it. And I think that kind of just helps a little bit. So I'll make sure that that little free piece is in the blog for you to download if you'd like that. This one is just, once again, the traditional magnet design. Still works well, it's just if your objects are heavy and you stick with the smaller magnets that I've used, the adhesion may not be quite strong enough. So those are those designs along with the matching stand there. Here we have the two wheel designs and I have oil filled both of these. You can see this one I haven't, um, or I haven't put the ring on yet because I'm waiting to order some unfinished veneer so I can paint it to match. And this one is really beautiful. So this one has um, a lot less fill in it, so the design definitely moves a little bit more. I'm not sure how the glare is, but hopefully you can see that. So there is the colored one in the wheel design, and then another wheel design here, but with the opposite uh, graphic. And this is a slightly shorter scope because this is one of my first versions of it. So then finally, we have the bonus design here. And this is the glitter wand kaleidoscope. So this one doesn't require that you actually make an image disc. You only need to purchase one of these or use one that you already have. They come in a shorter length as well, but I decided to get a longer one. And you can actually turn it as it's flowing and that will transform the image as well. So this one, I did a, a quick drawing of a continuous image. And this is not included in the files, but it's, um, 
it was just to test how that looks so you could sort of see if you wanted to design your own image that you can actually just put one image all the way across and it kind of creates a really nice um, continuous seamless effect. So here is the stand that I did out of um, quarter inch Baltic birch. Haven't peeled that yet. That one goes here. And now I'm just gonna offer a couple final tips as you're making this. So I have an unfinished disc here and I've drilled a little hole in the top, which you probably cannot see. But if you wanna do an image in oil filled disc, make sure you let the glue cure all the way. If you do not let this cure for 24 hours, when you go to fill it, there's a good chance it's gonna pop and break the seal and then it's pretty much ruined. You have to start over because the oil gets all in there and then it won't weld properly. So make sure that you weld the center area and this outer ring really, really well. Let that fully cure. And then when you're actually ready, take a slightly larger syringe like this one and I just use regular baby oil and I will slowly fill this. Do not try and stick it in all at once. So you can see that the hole is big enough just for this to fit, but it's really important because this is airtight, when you're adding the oil, do not try and force all of the oil in at once. Add a little bit and then pull the syringe out so the air can escape. If you don't do that, you have a chance of popping the seal because of the pressure as well. So add a little bit and let it go out. You can also drill a second hole so that air can escape, but I wanna have the fewest places that I have to fill afterwards. So once that's full, I take a little bit of UV resin and then I just harden that. I'll add like a little drop of it, take a needle and sort of poke it down in there so that it kind of gets into the hole. And then I'll cure that for two minutes. I'll add another little layer, cure, and then it's ready to go and you'll have a design like this one. So a nice sort of seamless oil-filled scope. The last little tip, and I probably should have covered this at the beginning, is make sure that you test the slots before you spend all of your time and material cutting out these designs. So included in the file are these little tab testers, and I suggest cutting them out of whatever materials you plan to use and then testing them together. If they're a little loose, you can always use glue. But if they're too tight, you need to adjust the slots or you're likely to split the wood or the material when you try and pop in your slats. So you can also just make an extra disc of whatever material you're planning to use and then cut different slots out of different materials and test them to see how they fit. So you can see I have the walnut here, the Baltic birch, and then the acrylic. And this one's pretty loose, so I might either add glue or thicken that up. If I take my calipers here, I can see that each material is slightly different. I'm not sure if that shows up, but that's 0.14 inches. The acrylic is 0.11, and then the Baltic birch is 0.12. So that tiny little bit of a difference will affect how tightly they fit in the slots, but glue will definitely fix that if they're just a little bit loose. So hopefully that gives you an idea of how to assemble the file some of the different things you can do with it and that um, you won't have any difficulty as you go forward to make these on your own. So thank you very much.